anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Actually, don't yeah. answer that. <laughs> don't. I just say that because I always say that. You, you know what? Just just don't answer that. There, there's not a there's not a good way to answer that. So just don't. No. Nah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, Dep- Zach. depression soothing. Yeah. <laughs> so, gee, Zach, that was a little too real, buddy. Which, yeah. So- get on. <laughs> you want us to open this one? Hey, Austin, you want us to open this one with the uh, theme to mash? Is that is that is that where you're at right now, Zach? Anyone who knows the actual lyrics to that song knows exactly what the hell I'm talking about. I think I think to to start the to start our uh, Scarlet and Great episode here, Jared. I think we'll start by um by um going into our mailbag here from Duncan from the Discord. I think. All uh, right, that's is that, is, is that's it, a change up. That's a change up. I like it. I think. I think this is a um, great way to start after a uh, a beatdown that happened this weekend. Uh, Duncan asks, what now? I'll hang up and listen to your answer. <laughs> what now? Um, so a lot, lot of people calling for Ryan Day's job. I'll just going to get. I'm gonna, so let's just address this one early. That's. No. No, 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 no. You can be upset at him. You can give him um, a, a lion's share of the blame for the for this game. I, I won't disagree with you on either of those things. Um, Jared, because it won't happen doesn't mean it shouldn't. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. Now, is any honeymoon, grace period, any honeymoon period, grace period is... That's done. You want to say he's on the hot seat? Okay. Sure. Can't do it again. Um, no. If he drops a third, he's done. Like, he's not, he's getting his own ticket back from Ann Arbor if he drops it again next year. That's, that's lying in the sand. Yeah. No, it's definitely, definitely unacceptable here. I mean, it's, God, it's it, it's tough. It, it's tough because I mean the on uh, one on one hand, and I, I've been really thinking about what I was wanting to I say read it, in, in our recording here. Jared was was I mean it got on one hand here. Ryan Day is a fantastic recruiter. Fantastic. There's not much many. There's not many other head coaches that does it better than Coach Day. And what he's done. And what he's done on the field, it's Austin. It's he's great. got his Ohio State's gotten their pick of quarterbacks for the last how many recruiting cycles? Yeah, and yes, he and he's is. Done, he, he's he's he has done a reputation a, a, as a quarterback whisperer, which is enormous. Quarterback's most important position on the field. He has for the second time recruited the number now granted the other number one quarterback in the country left after a year but that's that's just how that shit goes sometimes but he's now for the second time received a commitment from the best quarterback in the country and and the one one job and he's done a great job with the offense of what we what we saw and a lot of people hated it they hated at the time and, and it's funny how we're here um after a second straight loss to Michigan. And now we're looking back at an offense that Ohio state fans hated was that um, whole JT Barrett and the read option where people right. hated that. I, I, I want a quarterback who can throw it down the field. I, I want, I don't I'm tired of these three, four yard plays. I, I want to, I want to see an actual quarterback that I can actually throw it now. And now here we are with two, Two games in a row losing to Michigan, people are like, "Because I want JT Barrett back. I want JT Barrett back. I want I want the listen. The read, you don't option. You don't want JT Barrett back. You want those Michigan teams back. Those were shitty Michigan teams, and like, you can be upset, like because that that's just that's just what people do when they're upset. Mm-hmm. Okay, this didn't work. Do everything the opposite. I mean, that, and that's just being reactionary, and that's. That's emotional and that's fine. Like if you're still, if you're watching this on listening to this on Monday and you're still in that place, that's fine. 
take your time, mourn with it. Um, but to wholesale change everything at this point is is silly, I think. Um, I but I, I hear you. I feel it. I I understand they're not a bad team. Can can everyone can everyone stop saying that Michigan's a bad football team? That is not true. Came into the came into this game the number one defense in the country. This is maybe the best offensive line in the country. I warned you about the offensive line. I warned you about Donovan Edwards. If you go back and watch Know Your Enemy, I warned you about those things. Stop saying that this is a bad Michigan team. It is not. Now, I fully believe that Ohio State can and should have enough talent to beat anyone in the country and shouldn't be losing to anyone in the country 45 to 23. So don't don't think I'm making excuses right now because I'm not. You do not lose to anybody like that. You're way too talented to lose to anybody in the country like that. So please don't think that I'm trying to like make excuses, but you do when you quit, which yeah, the defense quit those last couple series, the defense quit. Uh, I, I agree. Um, the, 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 the issue, the issue I have with this game, I mean, the first half, so, but this is the best, I'll try, I'll try, I'll these try, are the I'll best two the Michigan teams. These are the best the, two Michigan teams that have been put on the field since Lloyd Carr. I, I, yeah, I agree. I, I agree. Since, since 2006, this is the best, this is the best um, Michigan team that we've seen the past two years. But so the first, the first half here, Jared, first series, fantastic. Oh, we're going to run away with this, this team, this, this is looking great. We, we, we went down the field on our first drive, got a touchdown. Um, fantastic. And then the, I think in the second, yeah, it was the second drive. All right, you got you got a um, you got a field goal. Okay, wish wish we had a touchdown there. And I I felt like that that was the beginning of just you know, just something something happening there. It, mental mental mistakes, dumb penalties, dumb play calling here. And Ohio State kept shooting themselves in the foot. And yeah, and there was a time there was a time when Ohio State should have been and looked like they should have been up like 21 to three at one point because of how well they've played in that first quarter. And then, like I said, they kept shooting themselves in the foot, dumb penalties that they shouldn't be committing um, at the end of the season here. And then you hold Michigan to, what is it here? 10 rushing yards in the first half, 10. That is outstanding. Fantastic. Yeah, but, you don't, you don't, if you do that and you're only, as Kyle was saying, if you do that and you're only up by that many points, that that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was, I was, um, and by, by the way, uh, I, was I was talking to my brother. Chop Daddy that. says, I, I, real quick, Kyle, Chop Daddy says, Michigan players and coaches wanted it more full stop. Hard sale disagree. Did you not see the Ohio State players sobbing, leaving the field? Do not, do not. That That's so cliche. To just say, well, they wanted it more. I, 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 I disagree. Well, that that's just classless. So yeah, they, they held Michigan to ten rushing yards in that first half, and like 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 you said, Jared, you're only up by three. And I I was um, talking to my brother. I'm like, they're they're just letting him hang around here. I I don't have a good feeling about this. This is not. I agree. I, so something something's gotta something's gotta change here. And I had full faith in Ryan Day because he's made good second half uh adjustments throughout the year here i'm like all right he's he's going to be able to do another one here and we just saw a goose egg we just saw a goose egg of a performance in the in the second half we had like what it was a little more than 150 yards of offense in that second half just pathetic I, just pathetic overall there see and, 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 and then, and then, and then it that's was, exactly and then, what i would like to see you stop doing Zach, Ohio State lost to basically Toledo. Stop it. This is an excellent Michigan football team. Stop that. This went, is an excellent hold, Michigan football team. You went from holding Michigan to 10 yards in the first half, and then you gave up 242 yards in the second half there. Yeah. It's just un, unacceptable. Unacceptable. And that's all on the coaches. It's 
on the players for not executing, missed tackling, not knowing where the, where the heck you're at on the field there. Just unacceptable performance from the top bottom there, top, from the top all the way to the bottom. I agree. Um, I think there were, I mean, we'll get to the grades a little bit later, but like, I, I do think that there were some good performances out there by Ohio State. It's not, it's not all loss and it wasn't all bad. Um, and like, we we're not even going to talk about the playoffs in this show. Like I know, cause people are going to ask the question, does Ohio State still have a chance? Will they be bet that the, we'll talk about that in collegiate chaos. Um, and we'll probably talk about it again on either Thursday or Friday, whenever we release, um, uh, the slip picks for this upcoming weekend, we might move since there's no Ohio state game. We might move that up to Thursday. Um, but regardless, um, only expect one show in the latter half of this week when we'd normally do two and we'll release it on either Thursday or Friday. Let's do a cathartic episode. Isn't it? I think that's what we're trying to do right now. I think that's what we're attempting to do right now. Um, Kyle, and you know what, Kyle, along those lines, and I know we normally wait until the end of the show to do Ask Sloopcast, but why don't we pick up a few more of those just to let everyone sort of get in on it? All right, sure. So got a question here. With all the talent in the world, uh, this is our uh, good friend, uh, Buckeye Zach. Uh, with all the talent in the world, why does why does Ryan Day waste it? Um, I don't know if it's fair to say waste it, um, but they're not getting the best out of it. Um, I think, I think, I think the, I think the, the right book, way to word this, well, I think the right way to word this is with all the talent in the world that Ryan day has, why, or, um, why is this consistently, um, I just had it in my head. Uh, like you're kind con- falling it's short, missing. You're, yeah, falling short. You're constantly missing. You constantly you're you constantly swinging and missing every year. Yeah. Um. There's a good question there, and I do think, I, I do think there's a good question there. And one of the things, and and I'm I'm sort of pulling this back to like Oregon, because in a lot of ways, like. Chip Kelly is Ryan Day's mentor. I think it's sort of fair to to sort of look at Oregon um, in in that sort of way because it does sort of feel like that. Whereas Oregon was, and still is, by the way, excellent at absolutely decimating bad teams, scoring insane numbers, insane points against bad teams, but for some reason – that didn't always translate even to like better defenses. And that's a thing that Ryan day and Kevin Wilson, they're going to have to take a look at themselves and figure out why is it that the defense drops off and and like the, or excuse me, the offense and like the offense should drop off. Right. If you're playing a better defense, you're going to drop off, of course, but you shouldn't drop off the face of the earth, which is a thing we saw like in the Marcus Mayota, um, Mariota, um, and the, um, sort of Chip Kelly era of Oregon, also a thing we saw. And that, that is a thing that Ryan day is going to have to take a look at himself and, and ask that question. And Maybe his answer to that question last off season was we weren't tough enough and that's what they were working on this year. And that is not, it's not translating obviously. Um, no. Spike I, says I, he lacks play confidence calling against T. T- he might be in his head. I think that's entirely possible. Uh, he also yeah. says about the Oregon comparison because they feed off of momentum. And I think that is a very good observation, Spikes. Yeah. No, when you I, go I, conservative I, I, with your play calling, you neuter that momentum. Uh, Spikes, once again, I think that is an excellent observation. Because I mean, there there were times too. I mean, there I mean, there was obviously the one where it was like fourth and four, maybe fourth and five, and I can understand Ryan Dave like, no, it's too long. We're not going to go for it. But you saw 
Oh, that, that was the one where it was first and 35 and yeah. And, uh, CJ's out there like, no, we're going to get this shit. L- let us, let us, yeah, let us get this fourth down here. And Ryan Day's like, you no. want to, you want to talk about when you sort of knew the game was in trouble. It was Ryan Day punting inside Michigan territory, which is not a thing we ever see Ryan Day do. No. Like you're in that 40 to 50 yard line. It's relatively short. I think this was what Kyle was talking about, the fourth and five. And he punted. That is not a Ryan Day thing to do. That was a fear-based choice. And I am a huge fan of Ryan Day. I I will probably go too far defending him. I'm just going to acknowledge that that's my bias here. I am a huge Ryan Day fan. Um and I'm going, my fault will be to defend him too hard. Just, I'm going to acknowledge that right off of the top. But well, well, then it's, that, that, statement. that was too, that was him not being himself. And that, that was him getting inside of his own head and again, forgetting who he was and forgetting how he does things that punt and by the way, that punt ends up going into the end zone. If I'm remembering correctly, I think that was one where Michigan got a really good uh, rush off of the edge and Mirko had to, um, Mirko had to, I think, reposition himself to get it off without it getting blocked. And as a result, doesn't get a good punt off and it went into the end zone. If I'm, if that was the correct punt I'm thinking of, uh, if I'm not mixing up two different punt plays, um, but yeah, that was, again, like, I am a fan of Ryan Day. I'm going to, again, f- my fault is going to be biased towards him. I acknowledge this. Yeah, that, that, was, in the, that was in the first quarter because what ended up there, it was fourth and, it was, um, it was fourth that was and in the five. First it was, quarter? It was, four, it was fourth and, it was fourth and five. And um, at the third quarter. Was it the third quarter? Okay, I'm I'm looking at the wrong. Yeah, I, I'm positive it was not the first quarter because I would not have lost faith. <laughs> they, they had the turnover on it's, downs it's, in the in the first quarter, did they not? Okay, it, it, it's it's so it so goes with my same narrative here. So punt, punted it goes for a touchback. A Kyle, touchback. not letting punted the facts at, get in the, the way 50, of his narrative. At the 48 yard line, at Michigan's 48 yard line, goes back for a punt. And then Michigan goes for an almost eight minute drive for a touchdown. And yeah. then Ohio State, the next the next series goes three and out. So one of the things, uh, now let's not get off on that rant. Um, do you you want to do another ask Sloopcast, Kyle, or do you? Yeah, let's so do kind of go kind of go along the lines of of um, you defending Ryan Day here. Is Ryan Day the new era? of john cooper and we've been we've been seeing this sure. all weekend. we've been seeing this all weekend here sure um as, yeah as of right now yes right now until you see him beating michigan until you see things changed here with great recruiting class and you dominate all year and then you then you um crap the bed in a game here and, and more 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 especially to your rival here. Yeah, it's it's his John Cooper 2.0 here until I see otherwise. He's on that trajectory. I'm not going to say two losses. I mean, how many, how many times did Cooper lose to Michigan? Uh, um, he was like 2 and 10. Okay, so we're nowhere near that. We're nowhere near that. So, and by the way, I'm not saying that he should be given nine more tries and have the opportunity to lose nine more times. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying he gets to, I've, I've already said it. And again, I, I'm going to be Ryan day's biggest apologist and Ryan day's biggest fanboy today. Um, if he loses again next year, that's it. It's over. You, you, you let fickle have, you let Fickle have one year at Wisconsin and then let the mothership call him home or whatever, whoever 
maybe Vrabel is is tired of the NFL. I don't know. Um, but Woody started one and two, but Day isn't Woody. But by the way, do you have <laughs> Urban Meyer, Jim Tressel? I mean, Jim Tressel a little bit at the very beginning. At the very beginning. They never had to play. I'm well aware of how Urban started. Um, they started. Urban Meyer started against a terrible Michigan team. Can can we acknowledge that? Can we acknowledge that Jim that uh, Jim Tressel did too later in his tenure? Um, he did go up against a couple good Lloyd Carr teams at the beginning. He lost one of those games. Lloyd, and then post Lloyd Carr, Michigan was trash for a long time. And by the way, now we're supposed to be afraid of Jim Harbaugh. How many chances did it take Harbaugh to win one? Now we're supposed to be so afraid of Jim Harbaugh. I don't think, I don't think it's so much. I don't think it's so much being afraid of Harbaugh. I did, I just think it's so much of Ryan Day. And and it just seems like just being afraid here, like it, he tightened up, not not co- not coaching the way that he I agree. does all the other games. I agree. I think that's what people people is worried about. Not not about a coach that picks his nose in the middle of a game and eats them. It's Brian Day coaching, or or maybe maybe he needs to coach differently. Maybe he needs to coach differently in in this game here. But I think I've I've kind of established in my head, and I could be wrong, that him coaching differently was kind of the problem here. He got too conservative. And I don't know if Day was has just gotten more conservative over time because we we also saw him play a bit conservative in other games in November, but I think we were all sort of chalking that up to like, ah, uh, well, he's holding some stuff back for Michigan. And it turns back. It turns out the only thing we never really day equals scared conservative coaching when it matters. Again, that is not true. We've seen him beat Clemson and do so in fantastic fashion. We've seen him beat other really good Michigan teams. Well, okay, I mean, as an offensive coordinator and once as a head coach, uh, the one he won as against the head coach wasn't a great Michigan team, but. But we saw him, you know, do everything he could do against Bama, but they were just out talented that game, especially on the defensive side. Um, Mm -hmm. I I don't know. Um, 2019 was not a good. uh, Yeah, I I backed off of that, Zach. 2019 was not a good. um, Let's let's get to another question here, Jared, real quick. Um, Kyle, I think it's super worth noting. These are the best Michigan teams that have these last two Michigan teams are the best Michigan teams outside of like the revenge team that that was also a very good Michigan team. The their revenge tour team was also a good team, Um, but. These last two Michigan teams are the best teams. That Ohio that Michigan has had. Since 98. Period. Like we have to acknowledge that there's another side to this field. Yeah. No. Understand. Yeah. All right. Uh, so Randy asks us. Uh, they talk about how they prepare for the, for the Michigan game all year. Did we see anything new or innovative or special for the game? Not that I was able to see on television. Um, if I, you know, if we could see like once we see like Russ Fulton's breakdown, because. Uh, by this time, I no. Where do uh, Chop Daddy says? Where do our last teams rank? Not the bottom ten. I've already acknowledged. I've already said that this team, no matter who they were playing, I don't care if it was Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, TCU, Michigan. This team, with as much talent as it has, should not be losing by as many points as it has. Mm -hmm. As it did. I I already acknowledge that the team underperformed and I'm putting that on the coaching. I'm already acknowledging that. Like I'm not arguing against that point. I'm just saying 
it does need to be said. It's an yeah. understatement, is it? Yep. How how else would you like me to say that this team is too good to lose by this many points? How how much further would you like me to say that? Yeah. All right. Uh, got a question here. Uh, did Ryan Day play to not lose while while Jimmy played to win? Yeah, I I def I definitely think so. Yeah. I mean, you, I would you agree with that them. statement. You saw how many, how many of there, there was five of their touchdowns, five of them, Jared ended up going for, um, their touchdowns going longer than, um, 45 yards, five of them. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know how many touchdowns Ohio State let up. That was that long of a touchdown all year. And they let up five in here. Kyle, he was, you, was, you and I sat here during know your enemy and said, play a cover two and play a, a man zero. And yeah. because they can't throw it deep and yada, yada, yada. Y y the first big touchdown was against a man zero. The second big yep. touchdown was against the cover two. They implement. And by the way, we also said, Hey, against this Michigan team, you're going to play your corners up, play your corners up, get your corners up. No seven yard cushions, get those corners up. You know what else they did? They did that too. Kyle, the defense they took into that game is the exact defense you and I said they should have taken into that game. Just wasn't I, we, need to, <laughs> we need to acknowledge that. Yeah. They went in there with the exact defense that you and I said they should go into that defense with. Mm -hmm. And the corners just, uh, I think uh, I just saw someone post it up. Perhaps they need yeah. to pay y'all to coach. I mean, we also would have fucked up. They yeah, did corners, exactly what Kyle and I said they should have done. Yeah, the corners looked lost in many of the plays. Many of them. We we asked the question all year. Why do the corners keep playing back? Why do the corners keep playing back? Why are the corners always seven, eight yards? Now we know. They're, they're not good enough to play up. They're not good enough to play up. They're not good enough to be in a man zero. And, and now, that, now, now that we've seen year one of... Jim Knowles' defense, which I think tremendous, tremendous change as a whole that we've seen in a much needed change to um, to get this defense back to where it needs to be. But obviously, it's the defensive line um, is good. The linebackers got corrected. We saw them playing, yeah, um, really well. We thought, saw them play really well, um, and, and now now we now we see it's our corners so it's it's our corners that needs the attention going into next year i i think you have another year of jim Knowles getting the defense he wants to implement it get another get another year of potentially getting some recruits that he wants as well here maybe maybe look into the transfer portal too maybe we'll we'll, we'll see what these coming uh, weeks and months lead to but i i think i think the future's bright for Ohio State's defense here is just going to get better with another year of um of uh nose under the um under the uh, under the realm here realm under <laughs> you know what I mean I know what you mean Un uh, helm yeah. was the word you were looking helm, for there you. um oh you wouldn't go under the helm or would you anyway I don't care we're moving forward um all right another, another disagree another we're bringing we aren't bringing developing defensive backs. I don't know if we can say that for sure. Um, we have a brand, whole brand new defensive coaching staff in there. And I know that we want that. We want everything to be fixed right away. Proof is on the field. I agree. But again, the defensive coaching staff hasn't been there for a full year. And while I think the defensive line and linebacker and safety talent simply wasn't being utilized correctly, I do think there was a, uh, we knew from the beginning of the year that the corners were going to be, sl um, would you say that about Jeff Halfley? He did not have a shortage of defensive backs on that team. You have to remember, Chop. They put, but he had a year. Yeah, 
and Jim Knowles had a year with this defensive line and these linebackers. And you saw how much of a success that they were. Sometimes the talent isn't there. And I I still, to life of me, don't know why um, Denzel did not play well this year. Um, None of these DBs are first rounders. None of the corners are. Um, The safeties probably aren't either, uh, but they are at least high rounders. Um, Our DBs were booty the year before Jeff came. Yes. And the linebacker, how many times do I have to say this? The linebackers were booty last year and now they're good. The talent was always there. You have to remember this season, we started by moving a kicker to cornerback because the corners were so thin. There was no depth at the cornerback position. And then you started the year with injuries. Cam Martinez, who gave up a huge play and did not have a great year, also missed a lot of time because of injury. All the all the corners at some point missed a game due to injury. And there weren't that many of them to begin with. And that position was not recruiting misses plus poor coaching. There were recruiting misses at defensive back. Um, that happens when you fire your cornerback coach, who's an amazing recruiter. That happens. But we all knew that had to happen, right? N- no one's going to sit here and, and say that we should have stood pat on the defensive coaching staff, right? They, they lost, they, they gutted the defensive coaching room and they lost a couple guys as a result. That's a consequence. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Yep. Chop. I don't think that's going to happen. He had that, he had that opportunity last year. He had the opportunity. Combs had the opportunity to take a demotion to cornerback coach. He didn't take it. Nope. All right. Kabuto asks, what was that the worst Ohio State versus Michigan game of your lifetime for the Buckeyes? I don't I'm gonna know. Say, I'm, I'm going to say no because Ohio State was right there until like the last seven minutes or so. And then and then it just seemed like just everything just went apart and yeah, p- people and coaches forgot how to coach and play football. The, those last seven yeah, games. Well, so well, I mean, the, I mean the, 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 the final score, I mean, you lose by 22 points. It definitely feels so much bigger than it really was in the grand scheme of things. But man, some of those 90 losses were just heartbreaking as well. So it's, it's hard for me. Spike to says Tim Biakapatuka. Do you, yeah, that's that's my answer. Tim Bianca Patuka. The only person on earth who I wish ill. All right. For uh, sports reasons. See. For uh, sports reasons. Should uh should G Scott be suspended for the bowl game? Oh my god. Listen, I've been saying this all year. I've been saying this all year. What is he did fuck that possession. He absolutely fucked that possession. I agree with you spikes. I've been saying it all year, Kyle. What what have I said all year is the book on Ohio state and how to stop their offense. I've been saying it all year and then Michigan executed it perfectly. Play it. Their heads play a shit. Well, kind of. Yeah. Play a shell, force them to go incrementally down the field and wait for them to make a mistake. Bend, but don't break. Don't try and stop the Ohio State offense. You're not going to do it. Force the offense to go five yards at a time. And at the time, I said, and sort of make CJ Stroud dink and dunk and make him get impatient. This time, though, it wasn't C.J. Stroud. And by the way, if you're on Twitter right now talking shit on C.J. Stroud, turn in your Buckeye card. The dude deserves no blame for what happened. 
Well, I, I do want to kind but, of but hold that, Jerry. I, I, I hard disagree with you no. hard disagreeing with me, but I'm, I'm not hard disagreeing, but okay. Well, before we get there, you sort, you get him frustrated, but this offense has a real bad tendency to fuck itself. Holding calls, stupid 15 yard penalties, false starts. They need to examine what the hell's happening with the false starts. They, if you just force Ohio State to move slow and be consistent, they won't be. They'll, there'll be a missed block, a dropped pass, a stupid 15 yard penalty, a false start, a holding call, force Ohio State to move slowly and to shoot themselves in the foot. That's been the book on Ohio State and Ryan Day's Ohio State for a long time. And mm -hmm. Michigan executed it perfectly. Yeah. So that's why we need a legit run game. Okay. The guards are coming. I, I think that Ohio state's going to has in is going to, and has in some ways they're figuring out their offensive line recruiting. Um, you're not going to see that effect right away. Unfortunately, I, I don't know how good the offensive line is going to be next year, but that's a, we have a whole off season to talk about that. Um, and quite frankly, like you lost all your running backs. You had a line, you had a converted linebacker playing running back. That's why we need a legit run game, man. Uh, what do you, you had one of the best running backs in the country. Yeah, well, of course we do. Of course we do, but we need Evan Pryor would have helped a lot or a healthy Henderson or a healthy chop. It would have helped a lot. Mm -hmm. By the way, I got roasted in the discord at one and during the, uh, I think it was about the end of the first half where I said, Everyone's like, oh, yeah, we're, we're crushing. Oh, this is supposed to be back when we were feeling good. Oh, this is supposed to be such a great. Yeah, okay, Chip did run incre incredibly well. But I, I think a lot of that's on the offensive line. But anyway, a lot of the people were saying like, oh, the def defense is playing so great. This is supposed to be such a good Michigan offensive line. And, and we held them to, what was it, 10 yards in the first half? And I'm like, guys, the holes are there. I, I tried to tell everyone in the Discord, I'm like, the offensive line's blocking well, the holes are there, the running backs just aren't hitting them. And everyone was like, shitting on me, telling me I'm wrong. All right, guys. Okay. The blocks were there. Corum couldn't cut. Stokes isn't that guy. And Edwards eventually found his feet. And I warned everyone about this offensive line. And I warned everyone about Edwards. Everyone was so worried about Corum. I go, don't Edwards is just as good. I told everyone Edwards is just as good. And everyone was like, Corum, Corum, Corum. I'm like, man, be worried about Edwards too. Cause it's Edwards is a baller, but that offensive line is insane. That Michigan offensive line is insane. That is a five for five NFL offensive line. Our D line was soft again. I think that they did as well as you could have expected them to do against that defense or that offensive line. They did well for a very long time. Again, mm -hmm. they held them to 10 yards in the first half. Do better running backs get to some of those holes? Yes, but that's what the linebackers are for. And the linebackers also played well in this game. It, it, it's it's the big it's the big plays that. Ohio State gave up. M mentioned that they they gave up a where was it here a a seventy yard touchdown pass, a seventy five yard touchdown pass, a forty five yard touchdown pass, and then a seventy five yard run and an eighty five yard run. They just they just capitalize on the big plays there, and and if you took those out, and again, it's 
you can't really. But if you were to take those out, Ohio State defense did a really good job other than <laughs> those five big plays there. They, they, Stewart, they, 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 Stewart asks, is Michigan just developing O-line better than us? 150% yeah. yes. They are recruiting, not just developing, recruiting. It has been Ohio State's weakest spot in recruiting for years. And they made the, they made the coaching change. And you can't expect that to resolve itself over the course of one season. Not, not offensive line. You can't expect an offensive line coach to fix a bad offensive line situation in a year. That's not a realistic ask. Quite frankly, the offensive line played better than I expected it to, although my expectations were at least somewhat low. Um, yep. All right, let me let me ask. But the, the, um, we're going to lose Fry too. I mean, if you fire Day, you'll lose Fry. Yeah, but I don't think either of those things are going to happen. All right, got a got a question from Dinger here. Um, going back to uh, about C.J. Stroud here, and then we could have our. Um, our talk about or our discussion about CJ Stroud. He said, fair or not, what does Owen two and a potential bull sit do for CJ's legacy? Uh, it trashes it. And it's not, and to, to the first part of that question, it's not fair because I thought, well, I mean, last year, especially CJ Stroud was lights out. He's sitting by the way, I don't blame him. If if Ohio State doesn't go to the playoffs, let him sit. Let yeah, let Kyle McCord I'm, I'm, get I'm out come, there and get his first. Here in a little bit. By the way, that's yeah, good. I want that. I want that. Let Kyle McCord get his feet wet in a game that doesn't fucking matter. If Ohio yeah, okay. State doesn't go to the playoff, the game yes. doesn't fucking matter. Let Kyle McCord get started. Hundred percent. I mean, we saw that with last year. We saw Ohio State was without their two top wide receivers and people were not, not, not making a lot of, um, a lot of trash talk about those two sitting, but I mean, it got the chance for us to start seeing great things from the other players who didn't get to see the field as much. We saw Marvin Harrison jr. Ball out there and, and it was his, that was his coming out party. And we saw how great, great he was here. Maybe we'll we'll see that with uh, McCord here if if Ohio State doesn't make the playoffs here, which we'll cover more in the our Tuesday's episode. But if they don't make it, yeah, it, get McCord, get more court in to say, hey, CJ, you did great. Appreciate everything you've done here at Ohio State. But we need to look to the future for for the program here. Yeah, we're go, we're, I, go, we're gonna we're gonna have McCord. Let's um, let's be very clear. Whatever whatever bowl game to go to. Let's be very clear. If CJ Stroud, if Ohio State does not backdoor their way into a playoff game, CJ Stroud should sit. Let don't why would you risk your ACL in a meaningless fucking bowl game? Don't risk your ACL in a meaningless fucking bowl. I I agree. Austin, we'll talk about playoffs in the next episode. We're not doing that here. Um, right, so, so you're talking, you're talking about, um, and by the way, and like uh, I said, let McCord get out there. Let you, McCord you go talking, out there. You, you were talking about, uh, CJ, that this game wasn't on him, that he wasn't the cause for the team. No, to I, lose it. I never said CJ was coming back. I was talking, uh, Austin, I was talking about him sitting for the bowl game. I was never talking about him coming back. Never, ever, ever. That's not even a topic of discussion. Not, not from my mouth. It wasn't. Um, mentally, it could be. No, I, I'm literally sitting here saying that CJ Stroud should not even play in the Rose or Outback, whatever fuck back fuck bowl Ohio State ends up playing in this year. Um, my question was, if he decides that he's not, we're not even, that's not even a top of, uh, no, he's not new cat as in 
All right, hold on, hold on, Jared. So um, go, going back, going back to CJ and about this game, um, that he wasn't he wasn't the cause for the Buckeyes to not perform as well. I'd, I I kind of I would kind of disagree with that to an extent. I think his on the field like his stats and all that. I don't I don't think he's he's the cause of Ohio State to to lose the way they did. But I think as a leader, I think as a leader though, CJ Stroud did not step up the plate. Like there was, especially in that second half, there was no energy. There was no fire in this team here where when you needed, you needed somebody, somebody on that team to get in front of every other um, player's face and say, what the hell are we doing? Get our, get our heads out of our asses here and start playing some Buckeye football. We saw like no energy. We saw no fire. And we saw that on the sidelines of the Michigan team. They were jumping up and down. They were standing on the benches and getting excited. You saw none of that in Ohio State. Where are our leaders? Where are our captains getting the team fired up, ready to go to war here? You saw none of that. And JT, I, or not JT, but CJ has to have some of the blame for that. There was no energy to get that team back on their feet. CJ's not like a raw, raw guy. Um, he never has been. I, and you can call that a defect if you want yeah. to call that a defect. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But that's not who he is. I, I don't know. Um, Kyle, let's go from okay. that into the grades. Okay. Well, we're going to go through this real quick. Yeah. 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 Down here, Jared, little, little discussion here, but coaching as a whole, I, I, I give him a, I jump. don't, I don't think he's paid up. He still has the, he still has the walk on sticker. Coaching as a whole, Jared F. All right. I gave a D uh, offensive coaching. I, F. I, I was a little bit more. I was a little bit more generous. I said that's C minus. I, I need you to justify that. That I I, th I thought I thought in the first half and when when the things got going, they it got going, but I think yeah, maybe maybe I should maybe downgrade it to two or to D actually. The more more I'm thinking about it. So I, I'd probably give the coaching staff a D. Uh, quarterback, quarterback, I'd give an, a B. I'm giving Stroud a B plus. Um, again, I don't, he sat there. He took what was there. Um, most of the game and like he threw the two interceptions late, but he couldn't take a sack on the one play and he couldn't sit there and dink and dunk. He had to throw it downfield later. So those interceptions was just him not quitting. That was him trying everything he fucking could to yeah. keep keep the game going so i don't i don't blame him uh at all on that um yep all right so i, I thought okay. i i thought stroud had a, a pretty good game what what we need to what we need to acknowledge is that cj stroud played this entire season, almost this entire season without his four top basically the entire season aside from like a few quarters played this entire season without his four top pass catchers last year, basically mm -hmm. his only four pass catchers from last year. No, JSN is not coming back. Um, uh, O-line, O-line, Jared. I give them a C. Um, I thought they played well in the first half. They did keep CJ clean from a pass perspective. Most, if not the entire game. Um, yeah, that that's why I gave them a B. I, I thought they get, they gave a clean pocket for most of the game. I, I thought they did really well in the game. And there was, there was holes open on the, on the, anytime that they try to run the ball. I thought Ohio State did a pretty decent job running the ball. I don't think the issue was with the offensive line. They did a pretty solid job in this game. So I'd, I give them a B. I, I thought, I thought of anything on the offensive side, the offensive line um, did the best. With that being said, the running backs, I give a grade lower. I would say a C. 
I, I think there were there were holes open that, um, again, you can call it maybe lack of experience here with um, us going to fourth, fifth string running backs here. But there, there were holes open. And when they saw them, you saw big gains from the running backs here. But I, I give them a C. I, I think that's harsh only because of who they were. It was Mayan Williams at partial health. Um, and it was a linebacker. Mm-hmm. You had a freshman, a linebacker, and a 50% Mayan Williams. Can, again, so if we're going to grade based off of expectation, hell, I'm going to add a plus to it, and I'm going to give him a B plus. Um, yeah. We have to grade based off of expectation. If this was healthy Trey and healthy Mayan Williams in this game, I'd be trashing them right with you. Um, why? Why? Yeah. Why did Hayden only get two touches? That, that, that's that's why the coaching staff got a D in my in my books there. I I don't know the answer to that. I mean, Chip ran great. Chip had, um, Chip had what five nine? Yeah, five point nine a carry. Um, hmm? so I, I I said that I said that in the. In the first half there, I'm like, you need to well, get the ground game going more. And and they did in the first half. And then in the second half, it mostly wasn't there. You surprised the highest they right, got uh, the time of possession in this game? Because I am. Uh, yeah. Well, their first first half was crazy how 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 long they had the ball. But all right. Um, wide receivers. I, I give them a, a B minus. They're, they're, they weren't getting open. I don't. Maybe maybe it's just the type of defense Michigan was was running here, but wide receivers were struggling to get open here, and you sh- they should not have struggled that much. Yeah, um, Michigan was like, okay, well, we're going to take away Marvin Harrison the best we can, and like the one time they forgot or chose not to double him, CJ threw him a dime down the sideline, and Ohio State scored a touchdown. Um, so give credit where credit's due on that one. Um, yeah, you gave him a B minus. That's fair. I gave him a C. Um, I don't know. It's, it has to be more than Marvin Harrison and it has to be more than Marvin Harrison more consistently. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, tight ends D. but both of your, both of your tight ends got personal fouls in here. Stupid ones, uh, game un- altering un- ones. Yes, game altering ones. Yes. You I, know what, I Kyle? Co- Hold on. Since you said that, I think we got to drop them to an F. Because not only that, they didn't block well. They didn't block well. Um, there were several drops. One in the end zone, and granted, that was a great defensive play, but God damn it, you're a tight end. Your grip should be better than that. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was a highly disappointing day from the tight ends. Yep. All right, and all right, and the defensive coaching staff, F, straight up for me. Yeah, that's I just because an F minus isn't actually a thing. You gave um, up over gave up over three hundred yards in that second half. Unacceptable. Uh, Someone tell Sandman what we're doing here. (laughs) Yeah. Defensive ends is um, a B. I'd give the defensive ends a B. I thought thought overall, you know, know, I'll probably give a B minus, actually. Uh, I thought the defensive ends did pretty well. Um, But there were times, and and, uh, JJ made them pay. There were times when they try to go around their tackles and JJ just straight on went past the defensive ends and got, got good yardage there. Uh, yeah, I thought the defensive ends played, played well. Uh, I thought Zach Harrison played well. I thought JTT played well, excuse me, JT played well. Um, yeah, it's, I, I thought they played well. I don't put hardly any blame on them. Um, Kyle, Um, now I'm looking at your report card here. You're giving the D tackles a B minus, um, mm-hmm. I, I think you're being nice. Um, 
and I do agree, and I'm not going to totally trash him. I'm giving him a C minus myself, but so um, why is that? Because they need to participate in the pass rush. Uh, JJ McCarthy, your defensive ends aren't going to get sacks if they can comfortably step up. If the quarterback can comfortably step up every single time. If you can step up into the pocket every single time because the defensive tackles are getting no push. What good is it to have elite defensive ends? And by the way, last year, the beginning part of this year, the defensive tackles were more active in the pass rush than the defensive ends at times. So when was the last time we saw that? So how I looked at it in the first half there, first half there, defensive tackles played outstanding. Uh, Like the the first half, defensive tackle was an A plus. They did they did really well in that first half. But yeah, in the second half, they they didn't get the pressure up. They didn't um they didn't do as well as we hoped to of in that second half. So I kind of that's why I came to that B minus because of how well they did in the first half and then how poor they did in the second half. I I think C minus is um a little too much in my opinion, just because of how well they played in that first half. But I, they needed to, they only did half their job. They only did half their job for half the game. I'm quite frankly, I don't know if I'm, maybe I'm being too generous because they didn't do well in the run in the second half and they didn't participate in the pass rush at all. All right. And linebackers here, I, I probably give the linebackers a B. I think, I think they, they did okay. Uh, they made, they made some good tackles. Um, Definitely some tackles that they wish they got, some missed ones too. Uh, Eichenberg did a really, really good job here. Uh, Chambers played decent as well. But yeah, I think I think they were they were okay. So I'd give them a B. Yeah, I thought the linebackers played well. Literally, I mean, other than I, I don't know, I didn't I didn't watch the last couple big plays, last couple big runs uh, to say who who that was or wasn't on the fault of. I had my eyes closed through most of those. Um, But for the most part, I thought the linebackers played really well and all of the passes, all the big plays happened over their head. So you can't really put that on them. Yep. All right. And corners. The lowest grade you can, the lowest grade you can give as low as you can uh, for the corners here. Yeah, the, the, they got a straight. They 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 didn't get any. They if they were taking a, a written exam here, they didn't get any questions right. It was just straight on zero bomb. Yeah, they didn't even turn in the paper. Yeah, and then the safeties F. I I gave them I gave them like a D D minus because I think they did better than the corners, but not by much. Cam Martinez was playing cover safety when he got burnt. Um, as much as I like Ransom and as much as Ransom played well at times this, I mean, not well, as much as Ransom played excellently at times this year, he also gave up another big play. The the safe, we, we can't sit here and trash the corners and not also trash the safeties. Yep. They're every bit as guilty. That, yeah. That's, that's why I said they, I, I they think did poorly, I, but not as poorly as the corners though. I disagree. I right, think that the last they're one, every bit as culpable, if not more culpable. Okay. And then the last one here, my, my highest rating for, for the team here is special teams. I, a B plus. I I'd sure. B plus. I gave a C. I don't care. It, <laughs> um, I mean, like the punting was a disappointment, which isn't a thing we've said all year, but like we already talked about it. Like, the one punt that w- was kicked at the within the 40 50 yard line um but like he did a good job just to not get that blocked but the fact that he had to do that falls back on special teams why do we have a special teams coach if our special teams are pedestrian at best is my question mm-hmm. um yeah at best at best um <sighs> I had something important I wanted to say, but then I forgot it. 
I think we're talking about the safeties. I wanted to say something. I don't remember what. It's okay. All right. Uh, did you want to give out any Buckeye leaves, Jared? No. No Buckeye leaves. No one, no one gets a Buckeye leaf. All right. Fair enough. All right. Uh, that is, that is the end of the episode here, Jared. We reached the out one hour mark right on, right on cue here. <laughs> definitely, definitely not the outcome we were ho hoping to see here. Um, yeah, it's, it's tough because you keep, you keep seeing about, we, we spent 356 days, um, working to, to beat this team and it, it's the same result, almost the same, um, score. Like they, they lost by more than two scores here. It's, it's just, yeah, things, things need to change here. And well, I, I'm sure we'll have many more discussions, uh, in the near future about it. Yeah. I'm really trying look to at that. Jared. What? I just, saw, I just saw that we do now officially have a new patron. Oh, do we? We do. Yes. Okay. Um, it didn't, it didn't pop up on my screen yet. Scream screen yet. <laughs> Hold, on. Hold okay. on. I will do this right now. As right. we're doing it live. Hey, hey, we're let's guys, we got to celebrate something. We got to celebrate something. Sandman joins and then immediately joins the Patreon. We got to feel good about something. Sometimes you got to celebrate even, even when things feel like shit. Um, so welcome to the club Sandman. We hate it here. Woo. <laughs> um, I would say you should now see new options available for you. Uh, <laughs> can I get a fuck Jared from everyone? Why? I, I feel like this is a time in which we should be coming together. Uh, cause we have alerts. He, uh, well, he can't hear us, but. <laughs> oh, someone tell him to join the voice channel. All right. All right. Either way, we got to end this here. We can, we can talk to him about, um, in the in the next episode here though jerry but let's let's go and end this one here we'll have much more discussion in the in future weeks here all right um yeah let's let's get recording uh kyle if i can entice everyone to to watch the tuesday episode can ohio state still make the playoffs that's that's what's that's at least part of what we're going to talk about um and uh, with all that being, oh, uh, tonight's ending music. Uh, by the way, Sandman, I know you literally just joined the voice chat. We're about to do another. We're about to do another episode, so we're about to end this episode. But but stick around. We're gonna do a second one. Um. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, tonight's ending music, Kyle. I'm gonna fast forward right to the end if you're cool with that. All good. Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by the floor walkers. The name of this song is called your way. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, these are the floor walkers. <laughs>